guys, my name is Kelsey. I work with the City of Flint Farm Rec Department. Uh, and I'm excited to bring you another craft here today. I saw that some of you guys made my baby turtles and they turned out so cute being able to see them made my day. So if you do make this craft, post it up on the Facebook page and I would love to see them. Today we're doing a little bit more of a simple craft, not quite as in-depth as our turtles were, and that is salt painting. So here's my practice one I made. I added a background, but I won't be adding a background in the one we make together. This is just kind of to show you the possibilities. Okay. With that being said, let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is some paper. I'm using watercolor paper here, but you can really use whatever kind of paper you have lying around. Uh, the post where I learned this crap actually suggested black construction paper because it gives a really nice contrast. I'm going to be using tracing paper for this project just because I'm not the best artist, uh, but it works just as well if you're free handing, so whatever works is for you. We're also going to need glue. Once again, it doesn't matter exactly what kind. I liked this bottle because of the tip. Uh, we are actually going to be like drawing with this glue, so I found this precision tip really helpful. Uh, if you do have a bigger bottle like this, another thing I found would work is if you squirted some out and used the paintbrush to apply it. The only issue with this is you're probably going to have to throw away that paintbrush after because glue is really hard to clean out of brushes. We need some salt. This is kind of the magic of our project. This is what's going to take it from a normal watercolor painting to the next level. I have mine in a smaller shaker here just because I found this big one that was really hard to control when you were pouring. Uh, you aren't going to need this much, but you're going to need a good amount. Make sure if you're a child you have your parents permission before using all of their cooking salt. Watercolor set. Uh, doesn't have to be any particular one. Any watercolors will do. If you don't have watercolors, another option is taking some food coloring and diluting it with water. It will give you the same effect. And obviously we need a paintbrush to apply it. Alright, step one is planning out and drawing your design. Okay, if you aren't using tracing paper and you're creating your own unique design, you can obviously do this right on the paper that you're going to use. Because I'm using tracing paper, I'm going to start drawing it on that and then I'll transfer it over after. Okay, we're just going to do the puppy today um, one. I absolutely love puppies. I have my own puppy at home. I'll show you guys a picture. I think he's pretty cute. But also, uh, I did the cat in my practice drawing. I hope I remember to show you guys that. It should be at the beginning of this video, hopefully. I've chosen just to go around the outside lines. Uh, you could go on the inside too to kind of, you know, show you how thick to make your glue lines. If you are doing this on, you know, your your final, like your good paper, I suggest drawing a little bit lighter because at the end what we're going to do is we're going to erase any stray pencil marks and doing it lighter will help with that. If you are using tracing paper, you do kind of have to push a little bit harder. You need to get some you know, extra lead in there for it to transfer over. But you'll see when we transfer it, it's going to be nice and light. So we'll be able to, uh, you know, erase it later. Some of these details I don't plan to go over with glue. I found that when I did it with the cat, it looked kind of messy. But I'm still going to draw them in because I can trace them over 
with a black marker later. have to be perfect, right? This is for fun. Sometimes the imperfect art projects are the ones that turn out the cutest. And around the ears. And I think that's it. What I'm going to do now is replace that coloring sheet with my blank piece of paper. And I'm going to grab my tracing sheet as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that piece of tracing paper over. I'm going to grab my pencil. You don't have to use your pencil for this part. You can do anything to kind of push the lead onto your watercolor paper. I like to use pencil because then you can uh, see where you pushed already. So you don't have to worry about missing any spots. Another good idea would be to tape this down while you're doing it so it doesn't wiggle out on you. But like I said earlier, we're not worried about being perfect. I'm not too worried about it moving. And make sure we go all the way around, getting all the lines. Remember this part doesn't have to be neat because this isn't actually what's going on your paper, right? It's just my way of rubbing it in. Okay, now with any luck, when I take away this draping paper, we should have our puppy underneath. Yeah! For the sake of you guys being able to see the puppy throughout my process, I've made the lines a little bit darker. I wouldn't do this if I was doing it, you know, for any other reason than to show you guys. I would leave them light because that makes it easier to erase after if uh, need be. So next what we're going to do is grab our glue and we're also going to grab our salt. Okay, we're going to start with the glue, but we want the salt nearby just because we want to get it on really quickly before the glue dries. So I'm going to open up my glue. And I'm just going to start going around the lines. So the hardest part of this project is really just getting a consistent amount of glue and not making it a gloppy mess. If you have to pull up like this, I like to kind of catch the string with my fingers because anywhere there is glue, salt will stick to it. So we want to avoid as much extra glue around as we can. Okay. I hope you guys can see, like it's gonna come out thick. That's why I suggested either a drawing with thick lines and a drawing with not that much details because details are difficult with glue. You want to try to make it as even as possible. I can see I'm having some trouble keeping it even. We want to keep it even just because you'll be You'll be able to see on the end, like more salt is going to stick to the places with more glue. And I'm also trying to do this kind of speedy, right? Uh, we don't want to let the glue dry before we get the salt on. If you are doing like a bigger picture or, you know, a a picture that you want to put a lot of effort in and go nice and slow. You could do one section and then salt. Okay, and I'm going to start salting this. 
before the glue dries. I'm gonna turn my shaker to dump more because we want to be generous with the salt. Oh, well, maybe not that generous, but that's okay. I want to make sure that all our lines have a healthy amount of salt on them. We can kind of squish it around a little bit. Make sure you're not squishing it hard enough that you're moving the glue, but you can just kind of move your salt around, making sure it hits every single line. Okay. So you can take this to your garbage can and dump it out. Uh, make sure we're not making a mess, we're being super careful. Once it's all shaken off, you're gonna let it dry. We wanna let it dry completely before we move on to the next step. During my practice, I didn't quite let it dry uh, long enough and it didn't give me as cool of an effect. Okay, so make sure it dries completely before you move on to the painting. Okay, so now that my glue and my salt are dry, it's time to get painting. So I have watercolors here. Uh, remember, like I said at the beginning, if you don't have watercolors, you can use uh, diluted food coloring. It'll work just the same. But for my watercolors, I'm gonna look and pick out my first color. Purple is one of my favorite colors, so I'm loading up my brush with purple. Okay, I'm gonna dip back in with a little extra water, just because I find we get a better effect if our paint's a little bit more watery. Just gonna start to dab it on. As you can see, it kinda starts spreading on its own. spread the color around a little bit here. It kind of absorbs and kind of auto fills a little bit which is super cool. One nice way to use that effect is if you grab another color. I'm gonna go for pink here. Whoops, drippage. And if you start right beside your first color you get this really cool blend. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep going uh, you can use as many or as little colors as you want because of how easily it blends. I really like doing lots of colors, kind of like a rainbow for this. I think it ends up looking really cool. Mm. Picking colors is always the hardest part. You know, in the end, your colors don't really matter that much. You know, it's gonna look cool and rainbowy either way. But I, I think I spend way too long thinking about what color I'm going to do next. Some colors you might need to use a different amount of water, like I just tried this peachy orange color and uh, my normal amount of water didn't really do much so I'm doing this one a little bit more pigmented and then if I don't like that I can add more water to it after. Oh, I already did green. Hmm. If you aren't doing blending and you want to do totally separate colors, I would suggest cleaning your brush in between colors. But because I want mine to look all super blendy, I'm not too worried about cleaning my brush in between. So remember guys, it's okay if you make a mistake. I mean, they're gonna happen. There's no need to tear your, yourself up about it. I mean, look at this dog right here. He's so cute, he should be on vanity fur. Now he might even be able to star in the next big dog movie. I hear they're making Jurassic Bark. You know, I just might take my dog there so he can have some popcorn. All right, I'm done with the puns. We're just gonna keep on painting. I'm still having trouble picking colors. There's so many options here. Let's get some more red. 
If you do more of a dabbing motion, you're gonna get more of that cool kind of like absorbing effect. But if you paint it on, you'll get more of like a concentrated effect. So it's totally up to you. Need a little bit more water for that one. You could even do like a really simple repeating pattern. Um, the nice thing about, you know, the salt is it makes it kind of unique and special already. So I think it could look really cool like if you picked one or two colors and just went back and forth. You don't need the whole rainbow like I do, you're still going to get a really cool effect either way. I mean, I know I have a lot of colors. This is probably the biggest watercolor set I've ever had, which is pretty cool. You get a little on the paper. No big deal. It's going to add to the look. All right, I'm gonna finish off with the eyes. We're gonna try out this black watercolor. I sometimes have issue with black watercolor because it's either really dark or not dark enough. Oh, this one seems to be doing okay though. Nice dark eyes. Beautiful. And the last step for our little puppy here, at least in my case, is I'm gonna add some details using a Sharpie marker. Hey, you could totally do this with glue and paint too. I just like the added cuteness of having like a cleaner looking uh, face. But you know, now that I'm looking, I'm looking at it, I'm gonna add just a little bit of red. Not red, pink. Let's add pink in the tongue and oh no there we have it make sure if you're going over uh, parts you've already done that you let them dry completely before you try that I was in a little bit of a hurry and now I got some extra smudging which hey no big deal thank you guys so much for crafting with me today I had a great time and look at this it is so cute I can't wait to see what you guys come up with so until next time stay home stay safe